Good evening. Good evening. People, People of People God, of God be, glad. be glad. Your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness, sadness and turning the dark to light. to light. Be strong in hope. hope. Therefore, for your God comes, comes to save. You, you are God's children. children. Lord, make us one in the love of Christ today, today. And, forever. today and forever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the second Sunday of Advent. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm Jane Domros, and these are my two daughters, Elise and Lauren. And we are going to be talking today, um, kind of a continuation of our lesson from last week. So those of you who were able to join us last week, we talked about how Jesus was sent by God to reconcile us with God. And what that means is that Jesus was sent to make our relationship with God right and that Jesus also was sent for everyone, not just for Elise, not just for you, and not just for me. So today our Bible story is going to come from the book of Isaiah. There's a few questions I want you all to think about while we start reading the story. First of all, is Isaiah from the Old or the New Testament? Was Isaiah written before or after Jesus was born? And uh, what was Isaiah's job? And what does this mean? Okay. So, our Bible story today is about something that happened before Jesus was born. Last week, we heard from a shepherd who told us about the message an angel delivered announcing Jesus' birth. The shepherd told us that people had been waiting a long time for a Savior to be born. Today, our Bible story is being told by one of the prophets who foretold Jesus' birth. Let's hear what Isaiah has to say. My name is Isaiah, and I'm a prophet. A prophet is a person who delivers messages for God. Do you think that sounds like a fun job, telling people what God wants them to know? Sometimes it's a fun job, but often it is not. During my lifetime, I was unpopular because people didn't want to hear what I had to say. God gave me some difficult messages to deliver. I lived a long time ago, over 2,700 years ago. At that time, God's people were not happy. It was a difficult time to live. A lot of people were poor. Many of the leaders were corrupt. People were not always treated fairly. It had been about 500 years since God had delivered the people from slavery in Egypt. Do you remember that story? God used a leader named Moses to free God's people from slavery. But going back to the story, some people have forgotten about God freeing them from slavery. After all those things happened before they were born, people began to worship other gods. That's where I came in. God wanted me to tell the people to change their ways. I reminded people of God's faithfulness to them and told them to change their ways. I also told the people that trouble was coming if they didn't change their ways. God's people were not happy with me for telling them they weren't living the right way. I did get to deliver some good messages, though. Among the warnings I gave God's people, God had me deliver a message of hope. I told the people that God promised to send a Savior. I let the people know that one day a leader would come who would be wise, understanding, strong, caring, and a builder of peace. This leader would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. God had me deliver this hopeful message so people would remember that even when we make mistakes, God doesn't stop loving us. God didn't send a savior during my lifetime. In fact, after hearing my message of hope, God's people had to wait over 700 years before that promised leader was born. Do you know the name of the Savior I prophesied about? That's right, Jesus. God kept the promise to send a Savior when Jesus was born. When Jesus grew up, he quoted my prophecies to describe his ministry. I had told people God would send a leader to preach good news to the poor and set people free. Jesus said he was the one I had been talking about when I spoke those words. When God sent Jesus, God kept the promise I had delivered to the people. So we're in the season of Advent right now. Lauren, what are we waiting for during Advent? Christmas. Yep, Christmas. And what do we celebrate at Christmas time, Elise? The birth of Jesus Christ. Right. And how long is Advent? Four weeks. Yep, it's four weeks. So one week for each of our candles, right? Imagine if you had to wait 700 years for Christmas instead of just four weeks, right? 
So how do you think the people felt when they were waiting such a long time for the promised Savior to be born? Impatient. Impatient, maybe, yeah. Frustrated. Frustrated. Annoyed. Annoyed, maybe, right? Maybe like, when is this going to happen? Do you think maybe they didn't trust for a little bit and they thought maybe there isn't going to be a Savior sent? It's taking such a long time, right? So even though they had to wait a really long time, the people kept waiting and they kept hoping because they knew God had promised a Savior and that God keeps his promises. So when we were talking about Isaiah being a prophet who lived a long time ago, we talk about prophets delivering messages from God, right? So people don't always listen to the prophet, though. <laughs> so today we're going to play a game to see how good we are at listening to the prophet. So I'm going to give you some directions. I want you to do what I say, but only if I begin the sentence with the prophet says. If you don't hear me start with the prophet says, I don't want you to do the action. Okay? Kind of like Simon says. And you guys can play along with us. So, the prophet says, place your hands on your head. <laughs> Good, you got that one. The pastor says, touch your ear. The prophet says, put your hands on your hips. The prophet says, lift one foot off the floor. <laughs> you are doing it, yes, you can't see us. The pastor says, lift your other foot off the floor. The pastor says, I think I got Lauren on that one. Uh, Paul says, put your hands behind your back. It's kind of confusing when you say pastor, because it kind of sounds like prophet. Right, it's kind of tricky. You have to listen really closely, right? Whether I say pastor or prophet. The prophet says, put your hands at your side. The prophet says, touch your shoulders. The priest says, touch your elbow. Good. <laughs> the disciple says, point at your neighbor. The puppeteer says, flap your arms. Nobody got that one. <laughs> the prophet says, clap three times. <laughs> the prophet says, stomp your feet four times. The priest says, snap your fingers twice. The prophet says, stand up. Good, sit down. Ah, <laughs> good, I didn't get you. The prophet says, sit down. Good job, you guys. You're pretty good at listening as prophets. Mm. Or to the prophet, I should say. All right, so we talked about Isaiah's job being what, Lauren? Um, prophet. Right. And what do prophets do, at least? They spread God's word. Right, they deliver his messages. So today we heard about a few of the messages Isaiah delivered. But there's an entire book of the Bible with the messages of Isaiah. The Old Testament tells us about things that happened before Jesus was born. And the New Testament tells us stories about Jesus' life and his ministry and things that happened after Jesus' resurrection. So would we find Isaiah's messages in the Old Testament or in the New Testament at least? The Old Testament. Right. And since Isaiah lived many years before Jesus was born, they'd be in the Old Testament. How many chapters do you guys think are in the book of Isaiah? 64. 64? Um, 67. 67? Anybody? You, you don't want to change your guess? <laughs> we actually did a little prep before this, so they knew kind of where to guess. But there's actually 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. So God gave Isaiah a lot to say. Today we heard about a message of hope that Isaiah delivered to God's people. What was the hopeful message that Isaiah delivered, Lauren? A Savior will come. Yep, that one day a Savior would be born. So hoping for something is different than wanting something. When we hope for something, we expect it's going to happen. When someone gets sick and you're hoping that they get better, you want them to get better and you expect that they will. But God's people hope for a Savior. They believe that one day God would send a Savior. And when things in our life aren't going the way we want them to, we hope, we want them to, we hope and that we know that things will get better. So what are you guys hoping for for this Christmas season? Is there anything for yourself or your family or the world that you're hoping will happen? COVID will leave. COVID will leave, right? Maybe that we get a vaccine? So we can finally go to school again. Hoping to go back to school. We don't have to wear masks and social distance. Right. I think a lot of people are hoping for that this year. Are there any other things you're thinking of? Like for the world?
world? Can you think of anything else you might be hoping for? Not really? Hoping for maybe um, your families to stay safe if anybody is traveling anywhere? Yeah. Right. Lots of, lots of things that we hope for. Hoping they make right decisions when they're granted two different choices. Oh, hoping that people in the world will make good decisions, right? Yeah, because we're going to have a new president coming in, and we're hoping that he's led by God and that he's making good decisions for, for everybody, right? So lots of things to hope for. So in Isaiah's prophecies, he mentioned some names that Jesus would be called. Do you guys remember any of the names that we read before about what Jesus was called? Emmanuel? Um, he is called Emmanuel, but not in this particular passage that we read. Messiah. Um, he's also called Messiah, but not in our passage that we read. Here. Prince of Peace? Prince of Peace was one of them. I'll give you guys a hint. Wonderful Counselor. Right, Wonderful Counselor. How about Mighty God? Mm -hmm. Eternal Father. Eternal Father, okay? So he was called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. Now you guys jumped ahead to my next question because I wanted to ask if you knew other names that Jesus was called. And we said Emmanuel and Messiah. Can you think of any other ones that Jesus was called? The Light of the World. Light of the World. I'll give you a hint. Resurrection and Light. Right. He's called Christ the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And what about that one? God's Son. God's Son. Right. So there's lots of names that he's called. And I bet we could probably even come up with a longer list. And you guys might have some that we didn't include, but he has a lot of different names for one person, right? So why do you guys think that Jesus has so many different names? Because everyone sees him a little bit differently. Yeah, maybe people see him differently. Any ideas, Lauren? I mean, just what she said. Yeah. Does he do different things? Yeah, maybe he has different jobs that he does. Like you're called a sister, you're called a daughter, you're called a friend, and maybe those roles are a little bit different for you, depending on which one you're doing right then. So, um, what's your favorite name for Jesus, Elise? Messiah. Messiah. And how about you, Lauren? Same. Messiah? Okay. So your favorite name for Jesus might change depending what's on upon what's happening in your life. If it seems like your life is a little out of control, you might need Jesus to be the Prince of Peace. And if you need some courage and strength to do something that might be kind of hard, you might prefer Jesus' name of Mighty God. And if you need a friend to talk to, Jesus can be a wonderful counselor. So I want to thank you guys for joining us today on the second Sunday of Advent. Um, if there's one thing you take from this lesson today, I hope it's that you remember that God always keeps his promises, no matter how long you have to wait. So I'd like to end with a prayer. God, thank you for Isaiah's message of hope. Thank you for sending Jesus to give each one of us hope. Please help us to follow Jesus' example as we live our lives. Amen. Amen.